Hello and welcome back to the Hazard Position YouTube channel, it is Harry here and today with the chaos that is unraveling in Chinese football at the moment, it is time to do a video solely dedicated to the Chinese Super League and more specifically the major transfers that have occurred in that league, or to that league rather, since 2015. As a result of the greater focus on developing the sport within the country with President Xi's three-point plan for football, which was launched back in 2014, more funding was put into Chinese Super League clubs in order to sign players from abroad to raise the profile of the league. And whilst it did work to an extent, clubs are now going under, including last season's champions Jiangsu Suning, domestic players haven't really improved and the national team still looks a long way off challenging for the World Cup, as they had hoped to do by 2030. I have been wanting to do a video about the foreign imports for a while, and whilst my original idea of rating every single one of them since 2015 could have worked, my original shortlist was four and a half pages long, and I would have probably lost my mind, as I'm sure you would have as well. To compromise, I've picked out who I perceive to be the best five and the worst five transfers into the Chinese Super League since 2015, although to make things clear, I'm not including transfers between Chinese Super League clubs, so Oli Nagala's transfer from Changchun Yatai to Shanghai Shenhua is not considered, although his original move from Watford to Yatai would be eligible. I hope that makes sense, so without any further ado, here are the five best and five worst major transfers into the Chinese Super League since 2015, starting off with the five best. Number five, Hulk to Shanghai SIPG. Just another quick disclaimer before I do properly profile Hulk, all of the teams in question will contain the names that they had when they signed the players in question. So for example, Shanghai SAPG are now called Shanghai Port, but they will be referred to in this video as Shanghai SAPG, just for a bit of clarity. A player who continuously frustrated European audiences, Hulk clearly had the talent to make it in one of Europe's major leagues, but he never really decided to test himself properly, and upon departing Porto in 2012, it was to Zenit St. Petersburg for whom he hit 57 goals in 97 games from the wing, and when he left Russia, it was to a £320,000 a week contract at Shanghai SAPG for £45 million as a transfer fee. He joined midway through the 2016 Chinese domestic season, guiding them to third place in the league, and over the next four years, he never finished below fourth with Shanghai SAPG in the league, with the crowning glory coming in 2018 with a CSL title, as he scored 77 goals in 145 games for the club in all competitions. His best season came in 2017, as he hit 30 goals in 44 games, but immediately after the club were eliminated from the Asian Champions League in December 2020, he announced his departure, and he now plays for Atletico Mineiro, although his reputation has been tainted somewhat by the fact that he's now married to the niece of his former wife. A bit suspicious. Number 4. Cedric Bakambu to Beijing Guan Seth Felipe Cambu's departure from Villarreal was a huge shock to the Yellow Submarines, with midfielder Manu Trigales remarking that the club were, quote-unquote, screwed. But just three months after becoming the first African player to win the La Liga Player of the Month award, he rescinded his contract and moved to China. Beijing Guan paid his release clause of £35 million, but as a result of a 100% tax rate that needed to be paid on transfers above US$7 million, US dollars, which was enforced in China only a few weeks prior to Bakambu's move, he could have cost the club as much as £65 million. Whilst he's only won one Chinese FA Cup in 2018 with the club, Guan have consistently challenged for the league title since his arrival, with Bakambu spearheading the attack with 43 goals in 58 league games, including winning the Golden Boot last season. He's only one of two players in this entire video to still be playing for a Chinese Super League club, and maybe this could be the year that the pacey frontman finally lifts the league title, especially amidst the chaos that is going on in Chinese football right now. Number 3. Alex Tejera to Jiangsu Suning this really was one of the landmark arrivals for the Chinese Super League, considering not only did it break the record for the most expensive transfer in Chinese football history at the time, but it was the first true instance of the riches of the league being able to lure someone away from Europe who was in their prime, and being scouted at that time by major teams across the continent. Alex Tejero was in red-hot form for Shakhtar Donetsk during the 2015-2016 season, leading to Liverpool submitting a formal bid for the striker, but after their offers were rejected, Jiangsu Suning swooped in and signed him for 50 million euros. Whilst he didn't match his goal-scoring feats in Ukraine once out in China, he was a consistent presence for Suning for five seasons, scoring at a rate of just under one goal every other game as either a winger or a striker, and last season he scored and assisted in the second leg of the CSL final second leg to help Zhangzhou win their first ever league title. However, it would turn out to be their only league title, as just last week at the time of this recording, Zhang Zhu cancelled their operations completely, and Tejera now subsequently finds himself without a club, but his consistent form and title winning performance lands him a spot in third. Number 2. Paulinho to Guangzhou Evergrande 
Interestingly enough, Paulinho has actually transferred twice to Guangzhou Evergrande in his career, once in 2015 from Spurs and the other in 2018 after a year's hiatus at Barcelona, but it is the latter transfer which takes its spot in second place. Paulinho had done well admittedly during his first stint in China, putting in some fantastic midfield displays and helping the club win the Chinese Super League twice and the Asian Champions League once, before surprisingly moving to Barcelona in 2017 for 40 million euros. He impressed sufficiently in the Camp Nou to convince Guangzhou that they wanted him back, and although he was originally brought back in on loan, the move was made a permanent one in January 2019 for 42 million euros, 2 million euros more than what they originally sold him for in 2017. Ever since then, he has turned into a goal-scoring machine from midfield, scoring 47 goals in 81 games for the club, now known as just Guangzhou, and picking up another Chinese Super League title. Could Paulinho have cut it in Europe? as he showed during his fine form at Barcelona, quite probably, but instead he chose to stick it out in China and Guangzhou will be glad that they paid the big bucks for him. Number 1. Eren Zahavi to Guangzhou RNF A skillful attacking midfielder with great technique on the ball and a mastery over set-piece situations, Eren Zahavi had battered in goals from Maccabi Tel Aviv like it was nobody's business for three seasons between 2013 and 2016, and Guangzhou RNF decided he was worth paying 12.5 million euros for. Undoubtedly, he was, as although the club could only muster 6th, 5th, 10th and 12th place finishes during Zahavi's time with the Blue Lions, Zahavi's goal-scoring exploits were quite simply remarkable, even if only in the Chinese Super League. Between 2017 and 2019, he scored 76 goals in just 84 games, including a Chinese Super League record of 29 in 28 during the 2019 season, and he picked up the Golden Boot twice. Partway through the delayed 2020 campaign, he was sold to PSV Eindhoven, but his impact in China and on the club was such that he probably has to be the best foreign import to the Chinese Super League since 2015. That's it for the best 5 signings, and now let's move over to the worst 5 signings. Number 5. Adrian Ramos to Chongqing Dangdai Lifan I should also stress at this point that I do apologise for my awful pronunciations. Even though there have been players who have done worse in China than Adrian Ramos, including Stefan El Shavrari, who have only played 16 games across one cumulative season at Shanghai Shenhua and scored just once, Ramos is the one who gets us started in the worst transfer segment of this video for one very key reason, which I'll explain in a bit. A FIFA 15 legend, though for me at least, Ramos struggled to make an impact at Dortmund across three seasons at the club, and in 2017 they received an £11 million bid from Chongqing Dangdai Li Fan, which they readily accepted. However, Ramos didn't play a single game for Li Fan, as he was immediately loaned to sister club Granada, who were almost fully owned by the majority shareholder in Chongqing, namely Zhang Lijiang, before being permanently signed by the Len Legal Adelante outfit in 2018. I'm well aware that the clubs are owned by the same man, but why would you bother buying it for one of them if he sends it to the other straight away? It just seemed like a waste of £11 million, especially when Granada probably wouldn't have had to pay that much for him from Dortmund in the first place should they have signed him instead of Lee Fan. And so with that considered, from a financial standpoint at the very least, he has to take fifth. Number 4. Ramirez to Jiangsu Suning Ramirez was a key figure at Chelsea for five and a half years, as the pacey and energetic Brazilian anchored Chelsea's midfield with a lot of success over that time, winning a Champions League, a Europa League and a Premier League title with the Blues. However, Goose Hiddink's arrival in December 2015 spelt the end for Ramirez's time at Stamford Bridge, as Hiddink didn't really rate him that much, and Zhang Zhu Suning came in with a record £25 million bid to secure his signature, a record which was broken twice over the next two weeks, once by Tejera and another man who is coming up soon. Whilst he did well in his first season, leading the club to a runners-up spot and becoming captain, his performances dipped during his second and he didn't make a single appearance during his third or fourth. He was released from his £200,000 a week contract in May 2019, six months before it was due to expire, which shows how much his star had fallen over the course of the previous two years, and he is currently without a club after being released by Palmeiras in November 2020. Number 3. José Fonch to Dalian Yifang after a transfer to West Ham from Southampton in 2017 didn't work out, the Hammers decided to cut their losses with Joseph Fonch and sign him to Dalian Yifang in January 2018 for £5 million. To say that Fonch's time there was an unmitigated disaster would be an understatement, as on his debut for the club in the opening game of the season, he formed a part of a defence that conceded 8 goals against Shanghai SIPG. The Omens didn't look good, and Fonch would only play 6 more games for Dalian until terminating his contract with them on the day of the 2018 World Cup Final. 
Although he was a lot less expensive than some of the others in this video, he still didn't live up to any expectations, but since moving to Lille in 2018, his fortunes have changed drastically and he currently captains the Ligue 1 table toppers, so perhaps his stint in China did work out well for him in the end, although a lot less so for Dalian, who, after just one game, were left with egg on their face. Number 2. Jackson Martinez de Guangzhou Evergrande it was almost splitting hairs between this one and the transfer I've got up next, but in reality, I can't really put this one at top, since it isn't Guangzhou's fault that Jackson Martinez didn't have the desired impact whilst out in China. After struggling during his first half season at Atletico Madrid in 2015, Guangzhou offered the mattress makers a lifeline when they agreed to sign him for more than what Atleti had originally paid for him, in a deal that made him the most expensive Chinese Super League signing of all time at 42 million euros, although that record will be overtaken in a matter of days by Tejeda. Unfortunately, within a month of his debut, Martinez was ruled out for four months owing to an ankle injury, and his comeback would last for just two months, as in October 2016, the ankle went again, and he required surgery that ruled him out for two years. In March 2018, his contract was terminated by Guangzhou, who weren't willing to pay his astronomical wages if he was permanently injured, and he had only made 16 appearances and scored four goals during his time with the club. Number 1. Carlos Tevez to Shanghai Shenhua Realistically, of course Carlos Tevez' transfer to Shanghai Shenhua has to take top spot, as it was doomed from the moment he set foot in the country, and he knew it too. Despite stating that he would spend the rest of his career with his home club Boca upon returning to them in 2015, Tevez abandoned that sense of loyalty for a wad of cash, which isn't really wholly surprising considering it's Carlos Tevez at the end of the day, moving to Shanghai Shenhua for 40 million euros on an annual salary of 41 million euros. However, his time in China was blighted with problems, as on the pitch he only managed 4 goals in 16 games for the club, and off the pitch he had attitude problems throughout his time in China, being described by his manager as overweight in September 2017, and then even having the audacity to go on holiday to Disneyland over playing a game for them, despite being fully fit at that point. Having collected his paycheck, Terrors returned to Boca after just a year, stating in an interview with TVC Sports that he saw his stint in China as nothing more than a vacation, and that he immediately wanted to go home upon arriving in the country. Classic Carlos. That just about wraps up today's video on the 5 best and 5 worst major transfers to Chinese Super League clubs since 2015. If you think I missed any out or should have included someone else, let me know which one's down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and ring the little notification bell to the side of the subscribe button so you get notified whenever I upload a video straight away. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you then.